I suppose it's not hard to understand who I am. I mean, who I am by profession. Because who I am is not a question I'm going to answer here or now, or I don't know if it even will be answer, answered anywhere or at any time. So, yes, I'm a professional photographer. And it's not anything unique anymore, as it was 20 years ago when I started to be a photographer. And it's easy to prove. We are many photographers. I think each of you now in your surrounding, or even probably in your family, someone who is a photographer. You know, uh, probably in a family trips or in the weekends, we photographers usually ask, just, don't move, don't move, just take a look in the light. Yeah, that's right, just pretend that we are not there and just taking, taking, taking pictures. Or sometimes we photographers, we are, you know, we're sneaking around with our cameras and pretending that we are very important and doing very important things while we could actually help our relatives in garden work or, you know, dishwashing. If, if that's kind of familiar to you, then you know who is photographer. Yeah, but uh, we don't usually wear on this outfit of professionals. We do wear it on when something important is going on, like today, here. Yeah. And there is a more situation. While, what actually it means to be professional photographer? Uh, what is, let's say, difference between as professional photographer and uh, professional driver? Both of us have license to drive. And as every man, I think I drive very well. And there's also the rest of us who, uh, who makes the problems on the street, not me. Uh, while the most obvious I would tell, difference is that he's paid for driving car while me for taking pictures. Yeah, that's true. And there's another one very obvious as well, which is my, you know, my equipment I carry around and knowledge about how to use it. But about the license, um, we photographers, we are actually very lucky ones. Because uh, there's this uh, James Bond in his movies, he usually has this license, license to kill. Thanks God, we, we don't have license to kill, but we have license to shoot, and we shoot everywhere and everything. And yeah, we, there might be some street accident on the street, and we will be immediately there and take pictures there. And uh, there could be situations when uh, press events, we are huge of us are there, and huge mass of us, and, and um, even in the concerts. And what's most important, usually in the concerts, we get in for free. That might be one of the reasons why there are so many. But what else? We usually do take pictures of what we like, and that's our passion. But there might be situations, or might be some kind of issues, like, for example, death, which is not my favorite one, but I still take a picture of that. So, I, a photographer, might take a picture of what you like, but we photographers often are in situations where you don't want us to see at all. But we are there, because that is our job. Our job is to be there and to be photographers. But I'll try to go away a little bit from this military terminology of shooting something. Yeah, it's very, yeah, very common. Otherwise, I will start to tell you that both of those cameras, you know, have possibility to shoot 20 frames per second and have even artificial intelligence. Or with this lens, I can see the people there in the last row do they sleep or listen to me? Um, yeah, but what to do? There is no picture without a camera. And gear is very important for us, photographers, I mean. And um, in a contemporary world, when, you know, equipment actually has taken away everything what previously was so important part of our job, I mean professional job, photographer's job, like to measure exposure, to get the right exposure, as well as probably to take a focus on some subject, even to choose a subject. Now it's gone, it's taken, and so, so my equipment does it. So probably it will be just honest when I stand here to tell you that that's not me, but the cameras who make those beautiful and sometimes ugly pictures. When it goes wrong, it's very easy. Photographers usually blame cameras. You've heard it? Yeah, that's not the right lens, or that's not the right equipment, or that's not the right light, for example. I do ex uh, use this excuse as well for my wife when I need to tell her buy a new lens. I, I usually tell that I need this lens, I will have a better photo, I will have a better picture. And while it might sound like a joke, I actually truly believe that better gear makes 
better photo, but technically better. Anyway, who is author in this case, me or cameras? Of course, due to the fact that it is hard to pay copyright and I'm professional, I'm paid for my job, to the cameras, that's still me. Uh, and it will be for a while, while probably the bank account will be installed in the cameras as well. And, uh, uh, and, but somebody can excuse me and tell that, you know, those are still we, photographers who stand behind the cameras and decide whether to take a shoot or not, whether to take a picture or not. That's true. But imagine again, if you drive your car, for example, if you have the dri driving license on the streets and there are those street speed car, uh, cameras, have them ever mentioned them on the streets. And those cameras are very clever ones. They do know when to take a picture, of what to take a picture, and what I experience, they even have a bank account. They send off you out a picture and just ask you to pay for it. So, kind of scary thing. But, yes, I didn't come here to advertise your gear, so I think this is a situation where I will just take off my gear and start to tell you about the rest of the things we have to discuss. So, cameras are gone. Can I still tell me, tell you that I'm a photographer? I think. Of course, I'm brave enough to tell that yes, I am a photographer, because uh, I've made so many photos of, you know, grand landscapes. And, or, in my case, due to the fact I'm born in a seaside, I better prefer to take pictures of the sea. Yeah. As, well, I have been lucky enough as a photographer to take pictures of, of photos of great women, as well as great men. And, sure, I've done portraits of presidents as well as some royal family members. And I was lucky enough to take portraits of His Holy Excellency. But, you know, I'm the same as you. I do take pictures of my cat as well. <laughs> as well as my dog. And what's most important, I do make selfies. <laughs> and I think I'm a little bit cheating you, because the fact is, I still have my backup camera, my phone in the pocket. So, phones have to go away as well, because phones really does have good enough cameras to take great pictures. So, here I am. Not exactly naked, but uh, without my professional instruments. Can I still tell you that I'm a photographer? Or, let's ask this question from a different perspective. As I said, I'm an author. I'm paid for that. No, remember. So, what is, from all sorts of perspective, what it means to take a photo of something? And here, I would like to remind you something like, like a child when he learns his language or speech, what he or she does. He points out and tells, that's a chair. Or, that's a tree, for example or uh, the first name, what usually child names or points out is what? Yes, that's my mommy, that is my mother. So, what has child done when he points out? He kind of creates his world, world he knows, remembers, no meaning of what, the world which is, makes sense to him. So, we photographers, we do the same, we just look around and point out and like, doo, 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 doo. Name, 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 name. That's the way how we make meaning to things. We choose the things. But, you know, it is very important to one day become an adult, not just a grown-up child. So, it is important to give a meaning to meaningful things. And by that is, I mean... I would tell... If you want to give a meaning to meaningful thing, then you need to become a professional photographer, because that's a real professional photographer job, to find out from all the, all the things around you as a photographer, just those one which need to be 
which are so important, which and the meaning of which need to be added to those things like taking pictures, and then show the rest of us. That's the way professional photographers need to work. So, by other words, when photographer gets his camera and license to shoot, as you remember, he as well gets an obligation. Obligation to shoot something important. And who is giving this obligation to him? or to me, as professional photographer. You, society. We don't live anymore in a naked world. We live in a world of meanings. So, in that sense, or in that case, I need to show you the meaning. I need to show you those images. And in this case, I'd like to just put aside a little bit those photos of our pets, selfies and breakfast. They have meaning, but let's put aside a little bit. When photographers take a risk to be an author and to be present somewhere where he's needed as a professional photographer, so he takes his risk, sometimes physical risk, to be there because of the danger, you know, conflict zone, for example. Sometimes it can be some simply physically hard because of the weather conditions. Try to take a photo in minus 30 degrees, it's hard. Or in hot desert where it's plus 30 degrees, it's hard again. Sometimes photographer, when he takes this risk, is, is simply, you know, he, he's a little boring because imagine those situations when, uh, when there are speeches in a parliament and you are a photographer there. Just listen to those speeches of politicians. It could be boring a little bit. But when photographer decides that he needs to go there and try to look for meanings, he decides to be an let's say, witness of something, he decides to witness history. And here I would like to show you two pictures. One, both of them are done by my colleague Ivers Lepinch. This one is done back in 1989, and I think all of you know this image of the Baltic Quay. Another one is done in 1991, and as also precisely remembers and said to me, it's 25th of August. 6, 52 minutes in the morning. And by that I mean photographers conscious present somewhere where meaning of the going on event is necessary to capture and to show the rest of us. But don't misunderstand me. Um, everyday life has such meaningful things as well. The things where you need to be and to be present as photographer. Even, in, even if you're a professional one. Example, I want to take a picture of my grandmother. What I need to do? The first of all, I need to visit her. Is it so? I don't just need to, to visit, probably to help her. And then just sit down with her to drink a tea, eat her made cookies. And, you know, then you feel or decide, yes, this is this moment I want to take a picture of. This is a moment I want to take with me. And while I cannot repeat it anymore, she passed from this world 13 years ago. I still can remind myself a taste of her made cookies, because I have this photo. But don't misunderstand me. Photography is not a huge archive box where you just dive in when you need to find something, some feelings. Photography simply has Serious relationship with the concept time. It is so. Just listen. Tick. One second. Two seconds. Three seconds. Four seconds. As photographer, I need to decide which moment during those four seconds are the one, the important one, to take a picture of. So, I, as a photographer, not just decide whether this or this subject is that one. Well take a picture of, but as well when, and that's the most important part. We don't make a movies, we take a pictures. So, when you decide to do it, or me as a photographer, then I need to catch it in a moment, when you understand what you see, but still have feeling or kind of guessing what might happen in the future. So when you've done that, it's very easy. Then photography is not just about that, what's going on, but about that, what might happen in the future. 
There are situations where photographers, photographers are lucky enough. You know, we press photographers, we are just usually in a e events where when important things are going on. And it's very easy, we are just there and we get beautiful photos. But in most cases, actually, that is just our patient. And that's our experience, what gives the result. And sometimes, me as a photographer, I need to come back several times to get the meaning of the things. Like, for example, in this image of, uh, which was done in 1995, I still was a student. I was, uh, it's done in a suburb of Riga. I was a student, I was just training my eye. I was just going around and without, you know, serious conscious present, present feeling, I was just trained. And then, 10 years later, I came back to the same place, but already with a conscious understanding to be present there, to choose a subject where meaning needs to be added. And then I came again 10 years later, already in 2015, and then again in 2016, and again in January this year. And who knows, it might be so that I will go even more 10 years for looking on this meaning to put this puzzle of story to show to you. As I said in the beginning, there's no photo without a camera. So cameras are important. But while getting cameras, photographers get a license to go somewhere. They get an obligation, obligation to be there consciously where something important is going on, to choose a subject, write more of the subject, so that the meaning is present there. But he doesn't do it by his own. He do it because he's creating some kind of conversation with us, us who will take a look on those photos. Um, I do have a camera which can take 20 frames per second, which is gone from the stage now. But I, by taking those photos, I try to dis afterwards decide just one and choose one photo. And the reason is a very simple one. If you repeat too many times one word, you kind of start to lose a sense of this word. Is it so? So, it's better to choose this one, and then have a meaning of it. I read somewhere that photography is simple craft, and it is true. So, by doing it more and more, you become a better and better photographer. I do it more than 20 years, so it means that I'm a very good photographer. Or at least, I think so. I pretend to be so. But, I would like to add to the sentence something else. This is a craft, but it's not a craft of keeping camera in your hands or being a tripod. If this is a craft of just that kind of the things and better buy a tripod, the tripod keeps very steady camera, I think this is a craft for finding meaning of the things in a world. And I know that we live in a world of fulfilled with images, fulfilled with the pictures, but just few of those pictures have sense or ripe impact to me. So those one who I called photographs, which has this right moment present in there. So, when I go out from my home early morning as photographer for the next issue which I need to take a picture of, I do take not just my camera, but my own intelligence, I might tell. Because of course I have two one in, in my cameras, but I need my own one to get, get out and find that what I'm looking for. In this case, I would like to end, and I would like to wish you to get your photos taken in that precise moment when your chosen subject is meaningful. Thank you.